you know, I talked about issues in the small intestine, whether it's digestive enzymes <clears throat> or um, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And what I find is that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth often goes hand in hand with low stomach acid and, and bile because bile actually is an emulsifier, but it also is antimicrobial. It actually, its job is to actually reduce the amount of bacteria in the small intestine. So it helps kill off a lot of bacteria and stomach acid is also antimicrobial, right? So when food comes in, gets into the stomach acid, that kills off a good amount of bacteria, particularly the alkaline loving bacteria, the ones that don't like acid. In order to digest something like a steak, all right? So well, to start your stomach acid right now, like I haven't eaten a meal today, my stomach acid's probably somewhere between three to 3.5 on the pH scale. If I'm gonna have a steak for lunch, I need to get that stomach acid down to roughly around 1.5 to 2.2. So even though it doesn't sound like a big drop, you know, it's only like one and a half points on a pH scale, it's actually very energy demanding to get there. And so I need I need to be able to produce a lot of energy to get the stomach acid right in order to break down that steak. And when I get the acid down to that certain level, there's not a whole lot of microbes that are going to survive that. Everything we eat, even if the steak just came off the uh, the stove, right? It's still got microbes. Like the moment it's exposed to air, there's a bunch of microbes on it. So our stomach acid, again, is supposed to metabolize them, you know, and get rid of a lot of them. But if I can't produce enough, a lot of them survive. They move into the small intestine. And then the bile helps get rid of the more of the acid-loving bacteria and helps keep the overall bacterial or microbial load to a manageable level, right? And that's going to keep our immune system uh, functioning well. When the when the microbial load, and it could be anywhere in our body, but you know we're talking about our gut right now. When that overall microbial load goes above a certain threshold, when it increases, increases, boom! All of a sudden, it's over a certain threshold. It sets off more inflammatory activity and more immune activity in our body. And that can obviously cause a lot of different, a lot, lot more issues. And that's that's a survival mechanism. But over time, that can wear down the, the gut lining. That can cause, obviously, you know, inflammation, systemic inflammation throughout our body. So we need the right amount of stomach acid. We need the right amount of bile. And we need the right amount of digestive enzymes to help metabolize and break down the food. And so for different individuals, you know, they're going to respond to different, you know, different supplements or different strategies. Um, and so for some people, you know, digestive enzymes make a world of difference for them. For other people, bioflow support supplements make a world of difference for them. For some people, stomach acid support, right? Actually taking betaine HCL makes a huge difference. And they notice a huge difference. For some people, they kind of need a combination you know, <clears throat> of all of these. And they may even need, you know, a parasite cleanse or a bacterial cleanse. Uh, to to just kind of reduce, get that to knock down that overall microbial load under the threshold, get rid of a lot of these things, and then support all those digestive juice pathways, so that way they can really digest and optimize their meal. And then you wanna you wanna kind of figure out also your prebiotic tolerance, right? And this is kind of the last thing in this conversation that I want wanted to discuss was your prebiotic tolerance, meaning. For some people, and I look at it like a like a bell curve. For some people, they can thrive on on a very high fiber, plant based type of diet, right? And they do great on that. And then they tell everybody, "Oh, this is what you need to do." Okay. Whereas other people may do really, really bad when they're consuming a lot of plant based fiber. They do better on more of a carnivore style approach, right? They need little to almost no fiber, and they feel amazing when they do that. And then most people are probably somewhere in the middle where it's like they do well with a certain amount of plant fiber, but not an excess amount of plant fiber, right? And there's a certain threshold that each person has. And so you want to find out kind of where your threshold is. And so, you know, you're, you're listening to all these podcasts and they're saying, oh, you got to eat, you know, asparagus and artichokes and, um, you know, broccoli and cauliflower and all these prebiotic rich foods. But when you're consuming those foods, you don't feel good. Okay. Um, and so you got to figure out kind of your threshold level. So as you get your digestive juices uh, back to where they, you know, optimized, 
figure out the amount of prebiotics and the types of prebiotics that you just feel best with. Okay. And so that could be some experimentation, right? And you may say, okay, well, this size salad, I feel good. But when I do a big salad, I feel bad, right? That would be an example. Or, hey, I do actually do really good when I consume like a little arugula and cucumber salad. But when I have like a bowl of broccoli, I don't feel good with that. So you kind of experiment to figure out your threshold and the ones that you tend to do better with. All right. And that's kind of the. I'm so glad you said this. Yeah. Because honestly, it's funny because the other day I've been really trying to up my greens. And the other day, I think I just went nuts. Like I made like some sauteed kale. I made like this broccoli with sauteed onions and it was just greens after greens after greens. And I was like, after I ate it, I was like, I mean, there was no reason why I shouldn't have felt like a million bucks. Like there was nothing bad in it. And I was like, man, I must've just ate way too much of those. Cause so you're saying if, if you do that, let's just say you just have, like I did that day, I had the greens and I had kale and broccoli and this and that, and you don't feel good. Well, what are, what would, mm-hmm. is the reason why you're not feeling good? Yes. Yeah, so just as long as, you know, you didn't have a ton of, to take out other variables, as long as you didn't have like a ton of butter or a ton of like fat in there, because then it certainly could be a bioflow issue if that was the case. But let's say you just have like this big salad, not a whole lot of fat on it, lots of vegetables in there, um, you know, particularly hot, what we call high FODMAP vegetables, which onions would be one of those higher FODMAP vegetables, which are highly fermentable. And so again, the, you know, there's a lot of health experts or health health influencers out there that will say, oh, eat, you got to eat a lot of those, right? To support your microbiome. But if for, for certain individuals, they just don't feel good with that, that could be a sign that, again, you don't do quite as well with a lot of those fermentable uh, vegetables, fermentable carbohydrates. So you got to figure out your um, prebiotic or FODMAP threshold. And so it may be lower. So I would try a smaller salad or taking out one of the ingredients, maybe maybe the onions, right? You didn't do quite as well with because onions are very higher, they're higher FODMAP, right? So I would start looking at things like that and starting to try to figure out, uh, you know, your your strategies around that. 